All right, folks. He is on many people's pound for pound list at the top, coming off a fourth round knockout victory over Kell Brook, our guy from Omaha, Nebraska, none other than Terrence Bud Crawford. Bud, welcome to the show. Oh, there y'all go. There y'all go. There y'all go. That's right. Man, That's right. All, all the money he's making, he's still got a, a Spectrum phone or something. All right, listen. That's the iPhone, man. <laughs> no, it's not. Listen, That's the iPhone. But, it's not even your phone because you but, got an but, Android. On a serious note, listen, uh, congrats on a huge, huge win, man. Very proud of you. Uh, explosive performance. Um uh, once again, another statement. I think that, if I'm not mistaken, that's eight straight knockout victories in championship fights. Um, how did Omaha? Oh, well, you're not at Omaha yet. You haven't since the fight. You haven't been back to uh, Nebraska. Yeah, I left yesterday. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, listen. Let, let's jump right into it, Bud. Man, we want we want to talk about this. I congratulate you on the win. Uh, it, things are going viral on on Instagram, on social media about Bob Barum and some of the statements that he's made about you promoting yourself, about, about him right losing now. money. What was that? I don't want to. I don't even want to talk about that situation right now. Nah, you don't want to touch on it. Give us a little something. Give Ak and Barack your boy something. I Yo. love y'all. I don't even want. I when I see you, situation. I'm going to choke the <laughs> hell out of you for not talking about that right now, bro. Man, you Yo, better just, not talk to anybody know, else about it then. Just know that we're going to fight when I see you. You crazy if you're not going to talk about it now. I mean, how do you, how do you, how are you feeling? Oh, you, you know how I am. You know what I mean? It, it, it pissed me off because I'm one of the most loyalist persons that I, I feel, you know what I mean, to the core. And for him to, to go out and say some fool like that, it kind of, you know what I mean, made me just look at him a whole totally different way. You know what I mean? And that's just what it is. like. So before he even said that, you wasn't like, okay, I'm ready to jump ship no matter what. You wasn't feeling like that, never, were you? Listen, listen all that, I never not once said I was jumping ship. I was leaving top rank. I was uh-huh. anything. You know what I mean? So all these interviews, I mean, not interviews, but these little uh, headlines coming up, Terrence Crawford leaving top ratings for PBC and this and that. I don't know where all that came from. I never not once told any reporter that I was leaving top rank for PBC or or anything. Every time they ask me uh, any question, I said, I'm with top rank right now. Yeah, now you, and who knows what the future may hold? Come on, man. Right. You, don't have yeah, you, you know, I, I would have to agree with that, but I, I mean, I've, oh, you've shown nothing but loyalty, even re signing when you had opportunity to leave then. You you, mm-hmm. you obviously stayed with the company. Um, the the Pacquiao fight, do you think that's something that, that you know, that Bob is, is kind of like dangling in front of you to give you. Uh, to give you an urge to, okay, this is a big fight. I can make good money with Pacquiao fight. Would, would that fight be the fight to keep you around if you had the opportunity to leave? Nah, nah. Because I, I, I feel like I can get the Pacquiao fight you know, somewhere else as well. Being that Pacquiao is not with top rank right now. Right. So, right. you know, if, that, if, if the Pacquiao fight is going to happen, you know, it, it's going to be because of he, he wanted to happen, not because of Bob Aaron. Uh, Pacquiao got the right and to say so who he want to fight and when he want to fight him. So, you know, that's out of our control and out of our hands. It's all in Pacquiao hands because, you know, uh, he's Pacquiao. It's kind of like when Mayweather was picking and choosing his fighters. You know, uh, the public wanted him to fight Amir Khan, but he picked Andre Berto. You know, so right. that's true. Uh, it's not up to anybody else. Okay, so when you, now that you've heard what um, Bob Aram said about you, does that make you think that maybe your time is up at top rank or you just need to sit down and really scream on Bob Aram? Which one? Listen, I got a lot. I got a lot of things going through my head right now, you know yeah. what I mean? But I don't really like to, to talk about it because I never was the type of person that put my business in the streets. You know, if I always, if I ever had a problem with, Bob Aaron or top rank, I went to them. I never went to social media to to try to get any cool points or or 
anything, I always went to them. You know, we, I feel we like know that. if he had, no, you're if a he had, guy. yeah, if he had anything to say about me or how I'm doing anything, then he should have came to me instead. I just feel like that. Like he should have said, "All right, Terrence, let's let's come up with a plan or something." You know, what I mean? yeah. but you blatantly yeah. saying all this nonsense. Like, come on, man. Ain't nobody in your stable doing numbers like I'm doing. Nobody, yeah. not yeah. even, not even your your, your pre Madonnas that you <laughs> that you put so much uh, promotion and everything into. <laughs> the motherfuckers not doing nothing compared to me. So who's that? I just laugh. <laughs> yeah, he's talking about Lomachenko. <laughs> I'm talking about whoever. I'm talking right. about whoever. I'm not just singling him out because he's not the only fighter in the stable. I mean, I'm talking about whoever, you know what I mean? Whoever. But, so, but so what wanna, do you wanna... say when he says when he says that you need to promote yourself more? What do you say? That's about not my that? job. What, what? That's not my job. I'm not a promoter. What? <laughs> what am I? A fighter? I get, I get paid to fight. I don't get paid to promote. He right. get paid to promote. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, that's why. That's why he's my promoter. He supposed to promote me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. When you when you when you at, when you looking at somebody saying, "Oh, well, he's he's hard to promote." Why? Because you don't promote me like you promote everybody else. Mm. You know what I mean? I wasn't even going to talk about this. You know what I mean? But y'all my boys and I can give y'all the little exclusive. You know what? But I want to play but I want to play since I choked out since I choked out. <laughs> I you know what I mean? Since I so you gotta say it. Like, so you gotta say it live on the air right now. Like now, people will go back to YouTube and look for it. <laughs> Damn. Listen, listen, listen. I always felt like I was set up from the jump. You know what I mean? So, so they didn't have to pay me the money that I did, so deserve. You know what I mean? He talking about money, where I used to take pay cuts because I didn't care about the money. I just knew where I was going. You know what I mean? I didn't care. I knew I can whoop these. So I was like, all right, I'll take the $2 million to fight Victor Post, though, even though I felt like that was a big fight. I should have got more than that. You know what I mean? But I'm going to up anyway, so, and then I'm going to get more on the next fight. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I always took pay cuts because I knew, you know, I had to do that to get to where I wanted to go, and I was undisputed. You well, he I mean? always says that he always says that you he never pays you under the minimum, the whatever the money. Then, yeah, he 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 not he not he's going to pay me more than the minimum every single okay. time that I fight because I deserve okay. it. Do I you didn't took I didn't took I didn't took pay cuts in my career to just go for the minimum. Now, no, mm -hmm. not you're right. going to pay me what I'm worth. I always felt like I got set up for the simple fact that. When you go back to the fight with me and Postal, they never really promoted that fight and put no money in the promotion of that fight, being that they didn't want it on, on pay-per-view, for one. For two, they told me didn't nobody know who Victor Postal was uh, in the United States. He was just a Ukraine fighter that, you know, uh, people, people wasn't gonna buy into. I said, why? You as a promoter, you gotta make this man exciting for people to want to uh, buy buy the pay per view. Right. Right. So right. they was like, "Well, we we got a budget." They always hit me with this budget. We got a budget, so uh, we not gonna we not gonna put in such money when we know it's gonna be uh, a failure. Right. So you know, what I mean, that was the first one. You know, what I mean, if you go back. And you look at the pay-per-view with American, everybody want to talk about how bad the American fight, fight did. Mm. You know what I mean? When you go back, it, it was promoted one week. Mm. One week. Lomachenko, that's when they started. Lomachenko fought one week prior to me. They didn't know how much the paper the pay-per-view wasn't even on sale. For one. They didn't know how much the pay-per-view was going to be. They, they they was trying to figure out the networks and and and, and how was they going to do it with the ESPN because this was the first pay-per-view that ESPN did. 
So they use me as as a as a stepping stone to a, start a guinea, the a guinea you know, pig. You know what I mean? Yeah, the stepping stone to start how see how they was gonna do it for previous uh, events. So I didn't even get the 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 right rightfulness promotion because they didn't promote the fight until a week prior to us fighting. So did nobody have no pay-per-views. I didn't have no posters. I didn't have no ESPN telling everybody that I'm fighting or nothing. I didn't have no aware. Did nobody have the awareness that I was fighting on pay-per-view for one. When you look at any other promote uh, pay-per-view promotions that they did, it was months in advance. Right. You know what I mean? It, people had time to be like, man, y'all, y'all heard about this fight? Y'all heard about that fight? Nobody really heard about that fight. And when they did hear about it, they bought the fight. You know what I mean? Right. And then when they did hear about it prior, before that, they couldn't buy the fight because they didn't have it on sale. They, they didn't have nothing where they could buy it. They didn't have no no cost, no nothing. You know what I mean? This is how I normally know you know how a fight is being promoted you know what i mean loma chico was fighting on espn i was fighting on pay-per-view he got way more you know what i mean promotion than i did and i was the one fighting on pay-per-view i went to bob them and i and i kept asking i still got text messages in my phone with me getting that brad jacobs like damn man what the like when y'all gonna start promoting the fight? When y'all gonna start, you know what I mean? And he t- uh oh, well, it's a hold up. Uh, da, 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 da. You know what I mean? They had Lomachenko on the PlayStation. They had him on the uh, Hulu. They had him on the, uh, on, on something else on TV where, with the apps. So I'm like, damn. Right. I go to my Hulu and... <laughs> And they got Loma Chico, <laughs> you know what I mean, in his fight. <laughs> you know what wow. I mean? But they ain't saying nothing about me, and I'm fighting a week later. On paper. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, so yeah. No, no, so, so now, no, you know, on the Lomachenko Lopez fight, did you guys already knew, uh, know that the Brook fight was a done deal? Because there's some rumors that you had. No, it wasn't a done deal. It wasn't it a done deal. It wasn't a done deal. Okay, so, so they, didn't, they couldn't really promote it on that card because it wasn't official. It was a done It was a done deal. Everything was done. They was just waiting on me to sign the contract. Got, right. got you. You know what right, I mean? Now, I signed the contract that night. You know, I signed I, I want, that contract. You, you talk about promote. Um, uh, you know, pro, it's a promoter's job to promote you. And you're not a promoter, and you're right. I want to, I want to play a little cut for you of a promoter that was on a show discussed talking about you and the value that you have in Eddie Hearn. Um, Ty, Ty Nitty, can you um roll that tape? Firstly, you've got to love Bob Arum, haven't you? I mean, is he the most brutally honest individual you've ever seen? How can you possibly say what he said in front of his fighter? I mean, yeah. he's basically said, yeah. I've spent so much money on this guy, I'm not sure if he's worth it. I could have bought a nice house instead. I mean, that is what he said. I mean, I thought it was so disrespectful to Terence Crawford, to be honest with you. I mean, you've got this guy here who is pound for pound one of the best fighters in the world. As far as I'm concerned, that relationship's over. How long before you think you're going to get a phone call from from Al Heyman or PBC or one of them guys? I ain't worried about no phone call from nobody, man. No? (laughs) See, there you go. You staying loyal then. So you're saying staying loyal to top rank? Nah, man. Listen, listen. Like I said before, top rank is the, the company that I'm with right now. You know, and in the future, who knows what the future may hold? You know what I mean? Like, we, 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 we may have a disagreement right now. We going through some trials and tribulations that we gonna get it figured out. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I cannot bash Bob Arum and Top Rank. I cannot do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because without them, you know what I mean? They gave me the opportunity to accomplish everything I've accomplished in my career. So I can't sit there and bash Bob Arum in top rank when I know deep down in my heart that Bob Arum's, Bob Arum, he really is a good dude and he really 
did try to do everything in his possible in his will to to get these fights that I was asking for. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know what made him come out and you know say all the negative stuff he said about me. Maybe it's because of all these people kept saying that I was leaving them and he wanted to make it seem like I was the bad guy. I don't I don't know. Like that's one thing I haven't had a, the uh I haven't had a conversation with him about it. Right. You know, but you know, that's something that I, I can't even uh put anything on. Yeah, you just you just reacting because you're a little upset from from what you heard, which is a natural reaction, you know, because because you're such a, a loyal person. I mean, even um, hey Ty, can you read the Pugmire Pugmire um, a post on Twitter about about um what Bob Byram said? All right, so this is an excerpt from his article on the Athletic. He says, "I don't give a." Team Crawford got mad at me. The business is not about getting mad. The business is about facts and the reality of the situation. What did I say that was so wrong? I'll show him how much we've lost on his fights. Again, if we did this fight with Spence and put our money in for half of the risk and Crawford wins and Heyman wants to sign him, be my guest, for Christ's sake. In other words, I am not going to go in my pocket anymore for Terrence Crawford. I don't have to make a lot of money with him on this Spence fight, but I know I'll break even or make a couple of dollars. I'm no longer in the business of losing money on Terrence Crawford. What's your response to that, bud? That's cool. Right. That's cool. You know what I mean? Like if that's what if that's what he said, then that's cool. You know what I mean? Like he can he, like personally, if he feel that way, you know what I mean, he can release me now. You know what I mean? Like he can just release me. If you feel like you don't you don't have no know what I mean? I'm not an asset to your company anymore. You know what I mean? You can release me right now. You don't you don't have to wait till after a expense fight. Why do you have to wait till after a expense fight? You know what I mean? Release me now and you, you don't have to lose any money no more. You know what okay. I mean? If, if I'm if I'm such of a, a loss, a headache, you know what I mean? Like how important at this point in your career, bud, is the Errol Spence fight? Like, legacy fights It's not you. that important. I keep telling important. everybody, it's not right. that important. You know what I mean? Like, I don't I don't need Errol Spence for my legacy. I don't know why people are trying to make, make it seem like I need Errol Spence. He need me. I don't need him. You know what I mean? Like, when you look at everything, like, I keep telling people, they, they, they don't know about nothing. You know, everybody is saying I never fought anybody. So everybody runs with that. Oh, he need he needs to fight the top welterweights. He ain't fighting nobody. Okay, so Carol Brook was a top welterweight. He lost one time as as a welterweight. Mm -hmm. So the guy that everybody's saying, you know what I mean? Like, oh, Errol Spence is the boogeyman. He was beating him until he got his eye. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, me and him, you know, it, the fight started rocky, but I got him out of there. Oh, but he was damn as good. But, but prior to the fight, prior to the fight, when asked, we can rewind it, whatever. Kel Brook said this is the best he ever felt in his life. And, and after the fight, he didn't. He didn't give no excuses, no nothing. That's he true. just said he ain't never been hit like that. He ain't never been in that type of position ever in his right. life, right. sparring or anything. And he didn't been in there with some big guys. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? He said he's in the best shape of his life. He didn't struggle with the weight. He's strong. He ain't coming from 160 to uh, 147, so he cutting muscle. Right. He, he 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 left his family to go to the training camp, so he was 110 percent ready, ready. He didn't struggle on that on that scale. He made the weight as soon as he yeah. got on there. He didn't take off his draws. He didn't do all that extra stuff that that people that do struggle with the weight do. You know what I mean? And like I told him prior to the fight, when he was telling me that like I'm in the best shape of my life and you won't see, I said okay. Make sure you remember everything that you're saying, exactly. because I don't want no, I don't want no excuses after the fight, you right. know about oh something. I don't want to hear nothing. 
And he so, didn't give them to you. Hey. So you got to respect him. He didn't give no excuses. It's oh, no. As, 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 he, as, as, as he shouldn't. Right. You know right. what Absolutely. I mean? Like he said. Like he said. He was in oh. the best shape of his life. Mm -hmm. So when you when you say the best shape of your life, that means all the fights that you can have. Right. Yeah, you know absolutely. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. So, Not to mention when he fought Spence, he was coming down from 160, and it still took him 11 rounds to, to get him out of there. I'm just pointing never, that out. Uh, I pointed I pointed out something as well. Not only was he coming down to weight classes, he was coming off of an injury right. that he didn't even have proper time to heal. So, mm. okay. If you know anything about the body, when you got one eye, it's easier for the other eye to get. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, him coming off of a loss and then going right into that fight, his body already broken up from the big triple G. Then he come and fight Errol Spence. When, when he was really doing good. Right. You know what I mean? And a lot of people say if his eye would have held up, the fight would have been very interesting. And we all can we all can say that, but it didn't hold up, and he lost. Right. Well, as, in my as case, Kel Brook, go ahead. in my case, in my case, this man is coming off of three white a three fight win streak. He's not coming off a loss or coming off of any bad injuries or nothing like that. He's coming off of three wins, so he got the confidence. You know what I mean? He got the motivation. He got everything he need to fuel his fire to come in there and think he's going to dethrone me. Right. And for me to take him out in the fourth round like I did, a lot of people were saying, oh, he's washed up now. Oh, he's washed up now. But I guarantee you, if that Carol Brook that I fought Saturday fight another top welterweight and beat him, then they're going to say, oh, Carol's back. Carol's back. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? They're not going to give me my respect because they haters. They haters. But like, like, like my people's always told me, if you ain't got somebody hating and talking about you, you're doing something wrong. So I just take it in stride and just keep it moving. That's a good way to take it. I mean, you know, but like Kel Brook over here, we give you the credit that you deserve. And I feel like it wasn't like the fight started rocky. Like you said, you was just feeling him out. And it's not like he was hurting you. He just had no, a jab that you had to, you had to, you know, figure that jab out. And as far as Bob Arum, I, I think that sometimes the media can ask questions that lead someone to get upset to say something that might be the case or it might not. I would suggest that you just look into it and have that conversation with him. But I appreciate you talking about it. Now, yesterday, Canelo tried to break the Internet with his announcement. Now, his announcement was that he's fighting Callum Smith December 19th. How do you see that fight playing out? Uh, I still got Canelo. Okay. You know what I mean? I think I think you know uh, Canelo is a tremendous talent. You know he's very very skillful. You know he's very experienced right now, and I just think you know Colin Smith he's gonna uh, pose a few minor threats, but nothing too significant that can. You know, get the win. I think, you know, if 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 you want Canelo to be in a a tough fight that that we all know and we all want to see, it's Charlo. You know, you got to oh, give okay. it to Charlo, or you got to give it to uh, Boo Boo. Right. You know, you got oh. Boo Boo, you got Charlo, and you got Caleb Plant. You know, mm -hmm. and you got you got but Benavidez, David. I honestly think him and David will be a banger. You know, David. David is 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 big. He's strong. He punch hard. He's fast. You know, and I don't think uh, Canelo will be able to just walk through him and push him push him around, given the, the the height, the reach, you know, the speed, the power. You know, I think that's a, a great matchup. You know, with all all those guys. Do you still and, think uh, that Canelo's the best outside of Charlo? He's at you know still at one sixty and one sixty eight. Do you think Canelo's the best fighter between Benavidez, Caleb Plant? Uh, and all of those guys? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. That's why they got to fight the fight. You know, oh, we gotcha. can we can, we can can be on the outside looking in and say, oh, well, Canelo's better than these guys because he's accomplished more and he's been in the ring with Floyd Mayweather. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, but those guys that, that, we, that we mentioned, they didn't have the opportunity to be in the ring with Floyd Mayweather or be in the ring 
with a lot of those guys that Canelo fought at the time that Canelo fought him. So we really can't take that away from them, you know, because they're young and they're hungry and they and they proven that, you know, they they can have some success in the division, being that they uh, they champion. Right. You know, so that's why we want to see the fights happen, and I really believe that those fights will be real tough for Canelo. I don't think he he uh, have a walk in the park with any of those guys that I mentioned. Yeah, before you get out of here, but I want to play something funny for you real quick. Dana White has some things to say. I'm not sure if you heard it, but hey, Todd, let that run. Yeah, I didn't see how that whole thing played out, but I heard I heard Bob Arum little crying about it, Kim. I had to throw that in there. I hate that guy. Anyway. Did you see he actually, he, his fight, not to John Bob Aaron, but he said that, oh, I've lost so much money on Terence Crawford. I could build a house in Beverly Hills or something. Like, you imagine if I said that? Are you kidding me? You guys would murder me if I said that. I'd never hear the end of that. That's what you do. That's not his problem. That's your problem. His problem isn't to figure out how you make money. Signed a deal with this kid. Your job is to promote him. Your job is you, you made a deal. All, all these kids that I signed, you know, and if you look right now at, at all the kids that we signed and how many people we have on the our roster is, is is very inflated right now. We have a very very big roster, the biggest roster we've ever had in the history of the company. I have to pay all these kids. How I pay them is not their problem. It's my problem. And this guy wants to go, imagine me saying, oh, I got to pay Conor McGregor this much money. I could have built a house in Beverly Hills. Shut the up, you scumbag. Pay your fighter what you owe him. That's your job. Bob Arum is a piece of Good night, everybody. Man, what do you think about that, bud? <laughs> Dana White. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dana White. Dana, but it's real though. You know what I mean? Like everything he said was real. You know what I mean? Like, like I said before, like, you know what I mean? That's not my job to be a promoter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. You know, a lot of people look at Floyd Mayweather promoting himself and doing all this crazy stuff. You know, I'm me. I right. what I never seen. I never seen all these other fighters like I've said this for years and years and years. These fighters that come over to the United States that can't even speak English. You know what I mean? Like how they promote themselves. They can't even speak English. They can't even, you know what I mean? They sitting there in the mic like, yeah. Right. Huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, listen, say, yeah. listen, Eddie said it um, best yesterday. He said that, listen, uh, a Bud is a family man. He's a role model. He's a funny dude. And he fights. He's a, he's a master in that ring. He has it all. The promoter is supposed to promote all of those great things about about him. So, all right, listen, we get out. We got to get out of here, Bud. We appreciate the time, man. Hey, listen, we love I you, bro. Appreciate y'all. All right, yeah, no man. doubt. Take love it you, easy, bro. Take man. it Bud easy, Crawford, man.